the brain evolved to continually redefine normality, right? It's constantly redefining normality. It's constantly adapting to what is average. And then it sees according to that average, okay? I'm going to give you an example of this using something as basic as color. I want you to first notice that those two desert scenes are the same color. One is just the flipping of the other. I want you to stare at the dot between the red and the green, but I don't want you to look anywhere else. Just stare at the dot between the red and the green. And we're going to do it for about 30 seconds, right? And while you're doing this, I'm going to tell you what's happening inside your head. Your brain is learning. It's learning that the left side of its visual field is under green light, and the right side is under red light. That's becoming its new reality. You're also getting very sleepy. <laughs> Keep looking. Don't look anywhere else. When I tell you to, I'm going to ask you to look at the dot between the desert scenes, but not yet. Five, four, three, two, one. Look at the dot. Do they still look the same? No, the one on the left will look reddish, the one on the right will look greenish, except for 7% of the men who are colorblind. You might not have known that, right? And as you look around, your brain will again redefine normality. And we're just talking about color. So imagine what's true in everything else that your brain is doing. So when you open your eyes, what do you see? You don't see the world. The world exists. This is not postmodern relativism. There is a world. It's just that you don't see it. If a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound? No. It makes energy. But the sound is a construct of your brain. Nor do you see the data from the world because that could be meaningless, right? It could mean anything. Instead, you evolve to see something else. You evolve to see a meaning that is useful to see in the past a behavioral value of the data based on your past interaction with the world. And not just your past interaction, the interaction of your family, of your culture, of your organization, of your evolutionary history. Most of your life happened without you even there, right? So what do I mean by seeing meaning? I'm gonna give, we're going to do a little test, okay? I want you to read what you see in the next few slides, okay? We're going to use this in the context of language, which we're familiar with seeing meaning. Okay, you ready? We're going to do it all together. One, two, three. Very good. One, two, three. Good. One, two, three. <laughs> Brilliant. One, two, three. Remember the instructions class. I said, read what you see. You all failed, right? There are no words there. That literally says what I read in. Right? There's no law of physics that tells you you have to put an H between that W and A. Why did you do so? Because your brain has encoded the statistics of co-occurring letters in the English and other languages. So when you're presented with a completely arbitrary code, because remember, these letters don't exist if we don't. You put an H there because it was useful to do so in the past. But notice you don't put anything on the other side of that T. Why? Because it wasn't useful in the past, so you don't do so now. And notice that none of you read, what are you dreaming? Why? Because I had you reading. And that was part of your recent history, so you interpreted a completely arbitrary code accordingly. Right? And what's true for language is also true for color. So here you see a dark brown tile at the top and a light orange tile at the side, yes? That is your perceptual reality. You would bet your life that they are different when in fact they are exactly the same. Nothing is changing on the screen, right? That's your perceptual reality, and that's your physical reality. Right? You're seeing the meaning of the data, not the data.